exciting historic win for the ANT football team in their season opener this past weekend. Hello, I am Jordan Carlisle and welcome to another edition of the Aggie Sports Report. The Aggies were 1-5 all-time versus Appalachian State and they had never beaten the Mountaineers in their stadium. Well, all that has changed as ANT kicked off their season in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains this past Saturday night. Trevana Williams has the story. Great, love it. It's what we live for. It's what we live for. The Aggies didn't start the game off so well. When quarterback Laundre Jackson threw this 35-yard touchdown pass to Marcus Cox, but after a failed two-point conversion, Appalachian State was just up six to nothing. Seconds later, A&T struck back fast when Tony McRae ran for a 91-yard kickoff return to make it a tied game. But after Cody Jones kicked, the Aggies were up 7-6. A&T increased their lead on the final play of the first quarter. Quarterback Kashawn Quick throws this two-yard touchdown pass to Desmond Lawrence, giving the Aggies a 14-6 lead. It was a scoreless second quarter until Aggie linebacker Devontae Grant, a preseason All-American, intercepted this Laundre Jackson pass and returned it 57 yards for a touchdown. It was the third time Grant has returned an interception for a touchdown in his career, tying a school record. That gave the Aggies a 21-6 lead going into halftime. The qu third quarter was scoreless for both teams. The Aggies took a 24-6 lead in the fourth quarter with his 27-yard field goal from Cody Jones. Appalachian State was not giving up without a fight. With just over five minutes left in the game, Mountaineer quarterback Cameron Bryant throws 10 yards to Barrett Burns to cut the lead to 24-14. Then with 24 seconds left in the game, Bryant throws to Marcus Cox to make it a three-point game. 24-27. The Mountaineers then recovered an onside kick to set up a potential game-tying drive. With seven seconds left on the clock, Mountaineers attempt a 46-yard field goal to send the game into overtime. But Drew Stewart's kick sails wide left. The Aggies six gate with a thrilling victory, 24-27. Thanks, Travana. That was certainly quite a scene with the Aggies celebrating as the fireworks were going off after the game. We caught up with Coach Broadway and a few of the players to get their reaction after beating a ranked opponent for the first time in 10 years. Well, the, we did. You know, we had a couple of big plays in the first half, which set the tone a little bit. And, you know, I was a little bit concerned about running out of gas, which we did then. And the thing that, you know, we brought 25 freshmen up here, and that's amazing uh, to come up here and play those guys with 25, 25 freshmen on that squad. But um, everybody chipped in and did their part, and we got out of here with a win. I wouldn't call it revenge, but hey, it, it is what it is, you know, we, we, we play hard. We made a motto that if they don't score, they, they, they won't win. Let's take a look at some of the other numbers coming out of this game. Wide receiver Desmond Lawrence in his first game with A&T led all Aggie receivers with five catches for 43 yards and a touchdown. Running back Dominique Drake rushed for 84 yards and Travis Crosby led the defense with 12 tackles. The win was first for the Aggies over a non-HBCU opponent since beating Elon in 2004. And we can't forget the special teams play. The Aggies turned in one of their best special team performances in a long time. Perfect on all three extra point attempts, as well as this 27-yard field goal, which turned out to be the difference in the win for the Aggies. And punter Dominic Pescara routinely backed the Mountaineers up deep in their own territory with perfectly placed punts. It was a beautiful thing to see. He, we, he just needed to get that thing out of bounds a couple more times on the Warren. But Warren hit on the Warren and stopped, and we had a penalty, which uh, he had a great game. And our kick, kicker's pretty good, so kicking game-wise, we expect to be pretty good this year. If we can cont continue to kick the ball that well, then we'll have a chance to flip a field pretty easily. The A&T defense, one of the nation's best last season, picked up right where they left off. The Aggie defense kept the Mountaineers' offense off balance for a majority of the game. Ian Deere takes a closer look. North Carolina A&T returned four starters to a defense that was ranked second 
in Division I FCS football last season. But every defense needs a spark, and they got it early in the form of a 91-yard kick return by Tony McRae. And when we ran the kickoff back, it brought a lot of momentum. We call it, around, around antique football, we call it big mo, big momentum. And after Tony ran that kickoff back, it gave us a lot of momentum. And Big Mo put Devontae Grant in the right spot at the right time and carried him 57 yards to the end zone. That score extended the Aggies' lead to 21-6 going into halftime. We ran the play all week, and I knew once I got the check, I had to stay in, basically in the middle of the field. And once I seen uh, my uh, guy, he, crossed, uh, he ran behind me. I knew it was coming. Quarterback threw me the ball straight to me, and I just made a play. The defense held the Mountaineers scoreless in the second and third quarter with two interceptions, two sacks, and key tackles that killed 12 drives out of the Mountaineers' 16 that night. Here we made a motto that if they don't score, they, they, they won't win. And we tried to carry that over to this game, and we did as best as we could, and they didn't score more than us, so we ended up winning. The defense held off a late rally by App State to win the game 24-21. Devontae Grant tied a career school record of three interceptions returned for touchdowns and left Coach Broadway impressed. <laughs> you know what, he, I don't know how many he scored, but he, uh, he's got that knack and he's around the ball and he's make plays like that. He made some, some last year for us and hopefully he can continue to make them. The Aggies defense will celebrate this win but they know there's plenty of football left to play. The Aggies defense helped secure their first win over a ranked opponent in 10 years, but they're not getting ahead of themselves. They know they face a tough battle against Elon next week, a battle in front of their home crowd. I'm Ian Mitchell Deer for the Aggie Sports Report. Thanks, Ian. A&T will face their second straight Southern Conference opponent this Saturday when they host Elon in their home opener. We'll have more on that matchup later in the show. Right now, we have to take our first break, but when we come back, we will show you the volleyball team's first win of the year. Plus, we'll introduce you to a member of the A&T cross-country team who is running away from the competition. Stay tuned. The College of Arts and Sciences is the largest college in North Carolina A&T in terms of students, faculty, and number of courses taught. Our students gather to research the causes of climate change and meteorology, study human depression and social work and biology, and perform on Broadway. The university and community relax in the cradle of arts and sciences through WNAA, the University Gallery, our HDTV studio, and the award-winning University Marching Band. Visit us online. A&T Historical Minute, and I am William Robson. The Corbett Sports Center opened December 3rd, 1978. It is named after LSF Corbett, a 1931 graduate of A&T. Officially known as Mr. A&T, his official title was Sports Information Director. He performed many other roles on campus, including dorm counselor, and he was a member of the board in control of intercollegiate athletics. The three-story complex includes office space, classrooms, and two racquetball courts, in addition to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Corbett also houses many of the human performance and leisure study courses at A&T. The Corbett Sports Center is the current home of the North Carolina A&T men and women's basketball teams and the swimming team. This has been a historical minute, and I am William Robbs. In the College of Engineering, we build bridges from the simple to the complex. We have graduate and undergraduate programs in six departments. Our students and faculty study topics that touch your life today and affect your world tomorrow. In the College of Engineering, we make the future now. For more information, visit us online. Yo, what's really good is the P to the L to the A to the Y is your boy play, house party and all that good stuff. And I want to welcome you to the Aggie Sports Report. 
Welcome back to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm your host, Jordan Carlisle. The a and volleyball team picked up a win in their home opener this past Friday night. It was their first September win in three years. Avery Warwell has more. Thanks, Jordan. Competing in the Spartan a and Invitational, the Aggies squared off against Alabama State in their opening match on Friday. The Aggies picked up a thrilling win in five sets. After winning the first two sets, Alabama State fought back to win the next two before the Aggies won the match by winning the fifth set, 16-14. Uh, you know, I'm so excited. It's, it's hard to contain it right now. I mean, there's just so many emotions that will run through you after a uh, five-set victory like that. It's just it's been amazing. Sophomore Brooks Stamness and Alina McDaniel came up big for the Aggies with 17 kills and 10 digs each. Saturday didn't bring as much fortune as the Aggies lost at the hands of our crosstown rivals, UNCG, in straight sets. This game, Brooks Stamness led the Aggies with 12 kills, which marked her, which marked her second consecutive match with double-digit kills. Later that day, the ladies faced Murray State Racers, and although the Aggies started off strong, they were defeated three sets to one. Alina McDaniel led the team this time with 15 kills and was named to the all-tournament team. I'm Avery Warwell. Back to you, Jordan. Thanks, Avery. The Aggie volleyball team will stay busy the next couple of weeks, competing in the UNC Wilmington Tournament this weekend before hosting Elon and UNC Charlotte, and then traveling to Appalachian State before competing in the High Point University Tournament the following week. The a and cross-country teams have been staying busy as well. This past weekend, the Aggies competed in their second meet of the season, the North Carolina Central a and Relay in Durham. Junior Saeed Jones and Christian Harrison, along with freshman Frankie Mills, led the Aggie men to a first-place finish in the 6K race. Jones won the meet with a finishing time of 21 minutes and 22 seconds, marking the second consecutive year that he has won this meet. Harrison finished second, just one second behind Jones. Mills finished just four seconds after Jones. Redshirt senior Janessa Ben led the ladies with a second place finish in the 5K event. She recorded a time of 23 minutes and 22 seconds, one minute ahead of sophomore teammate Janae Farrell, who finished third overall. Both teams will travel to Elon this Saturday. We're very excited. Uh, we brought in a, an excellent recruiting class uh, on the men and women's side, uh, for sure, on the men's side. Uh, so we're really excited. Um, we're really excited to have uh, you know some of our seniors back on the women's side with Janessa being being our leader. Uh, so we're excited. We're looking forward uh, to this year. We did something a little different with our schedule. You know, we uh, made the schedule this year a little bit more uh, competitive because we want our student athletes to be in the fire right away. So we're definitely looking forward to seeing what they can do. Fifth year senior Janessa Ben is the unquestioned leader of the women's cross country team. A closer look reveals there's more than just running in this talented athlete's calendar. Janessa Ben started running at an early age. Our bus stop when I was younger was like a mile away from our house. I used to run home from the bus stop uphill. Like, I just love to run. It was Janessa's neighbor who saw her running to that bus stop and encouraged to join a track team. Dora Watley, he uh, ran for the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, I don't know, he, he's more than just my neighbor. He's more than a coach. He's like my second father. Janessa, who has been a member at a and track team for four years, will graduate this December. She's just upbeat about everything. She leads her team. Uh, I mean, just a great student athlete. You know, I can't say enough good things about her, other than I need her for a couple more years. Janessa is working towards her degree in civil engineering. She says a lot of the characteristics necessary for her major also translate to being a successful runner. In order to run four laps, eight laps, or anything over a mile efficiently, you really have to think about the process, your breathing, the times and the splits, your pace. You need to think about efficiency. And that's all the things that um, an engineer really has to have in mind when they're, they're working on a problem and a solution. Janessa certainly has a full calendar. However, there is one more special event she has planned for the future. In the near future, I will be getting married. I just feel so blessed to be able to find the love of my life at this young age. I'm Alana Covington for the Aggie Sports Report. Hey, we have to 
to take our second time out, but when we come back, we will hear more from ANC football coach Rod Broadway, and later we'll preview this weekend's home opener as the Aggie football team hosts Elon. Don't go away, we will be right back. This is our world. It's a place of wonder, a place of opportunity. It's also a place that graduates of North Carolina A&T State University enter with grand ambition. Classrooms, hospitals, corner offices, laboratories. These are the places where our students flourish. It's proof our graduates leave here prepared for the careers that await them. It's why you'll find Aggies everywhere making a difference in the world. This is an ANT Historical Minute, and I'm Alex Ravel. Blueford Library, to many students, the name is very familiar, but this is not the original Blueford Library. The original Blueford Library was built in 1955. The library was named after the university's third president, Fernandad Douglas Blueford, who served from 1925 to 1955. The current Blueford Library, dedicated in 1991, cost $16 million. The library currently offers over 700,000 volumes and over 60,000 e-books. The library also offers iPads, Kindles, e-readers, and more electronics to check out. On the second floor, it now contains a lounge for students to eat and drink in. The library is 153,000 square feet and can hold over 1,000 students comfortably. I'm Alex Reville and this has been a and Historical Minute. Welcome back to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm your host, Jordan Carlisle. a and football coach Rod Broadway holds a weekly press conference each Monday afternoon. After he answered questions with the media, he sat down with our very own Ian Deere. Thanks, Jordan. I'm here with Coach uh, Rod Broadway. Coach, tell me, what was the ride home like after the App State game? Actually, um, slow and slow and enjoyable. Slow and enjoyable? Yes. I, I couldn't get home fast enough, actually. <laughs> well, did, did you get a chance to enjoy those fireworks? I know they were meant for us, but... Uh, they actually, went off at the end. No, I didn't see them actually. We were in the locker room and I saw a burst here or there, but really didn't have an opportunity to see those. Okay, I did know. Did you enjoy them? Oh, I, I, I enjoy them. I love them. It's, oh, good. it's the best when we can steal another team's fireworks. That's, okay. that's what I say. But um, I know the team, you don't want the team to get too ahead of themselves. It's only one game. But should they be coming into this Elon game with a little bit more confidence than they would have, you know, they lost? Uh, of course. Of course, and you know, but we have some really good teaching tape, and we have some things they need to see this afternoon, and hopefully they understand that we got to get better as a football team, uh, fundamentally, technique-wise, scheme-wise. There's a lot of work to be done, and you know, one game doesn't make a season as big as when it this was. It was just one game, and we've got to prepare every week. And the key, and I say this all the time, you've heard me say it, you got to get better every week. But it was a great start for us, and again, I'm so proud of our coaching staff and players by their performance this past weekend. You had four receiving touchdowns last season. You got one against App State. Talk about quick and the development of that passing game. Well, so. we, we've got to get better than last season. I think we were, uh, I think we had 16 interceptions, four touchdowns, which didn't balance out. We need to flip those numbers and go for 16 touchdowns and zero interceptions. But uh, we can't do that because we're throwing one already, right? Right. So we're going to say 16 and one. Good, good start for us. But um, I, I think we'll be better. Uh, hopefully, because both of the guys are a year older now, and I think they understand the importance of protecting the football and understand what we're trying to do and uh, where they, we need to go with the ball. But one of the hardest things you teach, to teach is to make the easy throw, because they want the home run ball so many times when you have receivers uh, run wide open. I watch the game. I think it was a Florida game. I was watching a little Florida game the other day, and it was third and three. They had a guy five yards wide open. The guy threw the ball 40 yards downfield, incomplete. So just kept changing. Thirty-eight yards of total offense last week with their running back Tracy Coppage ran for over a hundred yards. What do you think the keys are going to be to stopping him? Well, gap control. 
we've got to stay in gap control and we've got to come off the ball and we've got to have our fields and fish. But the most important thing is it comes down to alignments and assignments, getting lined up and knowing what to do. And do you think special teams will also be a big factor against Elon as well? Special teams is always a big, a big factor against everyone, and we've got to be sound. That's why our third principle of our model is uh, win the kicking game. So hopefully we can win the kicking game again this week. Um, you know, with two kickers that we have, um, we got to get better in that area. And, and with the return guys, if we get some great effort and a couple blocks by some guys, we can make some plays with Devontae Graham back there as that punt returner and Dez Lawrence and Tony McCray returning kicks. You know, we have some guys back that can make, make some plays for us if we block things up the right way. Okay, going into this week, what are you going to be drilling into the team that they need to improve on absolutely against Elon? Gap control fundamentals. Gap control fundamentals. We've got to understand gap control. We've got to understand fundamentals. And then and right after that come fills and fits. We gotta fill the right alleys, we gotta fit the right gaps, and we've got to be conscious of what's going on around us. All right, thanks coach. Thank you, Ed. Jordan, back to you. Thanks, Ian. We'll take a closer look at this weekend's home opener when we return. Plus, we'll fill you in on a couple of changes to this year's home football games. We'll be right back. This is our world. It's a place of wonder, a place of opportunity. It's also a place that graduates of North Carolina A&T State University enter with grand ambition. Classrooms, hospitals, corner offices, laboratories. These are the places where our students flourish. It's proof our graduates leave here prepared for the careers that await them. It's why you'll find Aggies everywhere making a difference in the world. The College of Arts and Sciences is the largest college in North Carolina A&T in terms of students, faculty, and number of courses taught. Our students gather to research the causes of climate change and meteorology, study human depression and social work and biology, and perform on Broadway. The university and community relax in the cradle of arts and sciences through WNAA, the University Gallery, our HDTV studio, and the award-winning University Marching Band. Visit us online. In the College of Engineering, we build bridges from the simple to the complex. We have graduate and undergraduate programs in six departments. Our students and faculty study topics that touch your life today and affect your world tomorrow. In the College of Engineering, we make the future now. For more information, visit us online. Everybody chipped in and did their part and we got out of here with a win. You know, that's the, I think I was reading, there was six, eight, and five in this place. And for us to come up here and win with our, our little ragtag bunch from A&T, we're awful proud of them. Welcome back to the Aggie Sports Report. I'm your host, Jordan Carlisle. Prior to this past Saturday's win over Appalachian State, the last non-HBCU win for A&T's football team came against, you guessed it, Elon, back in 2004. Danica Witsit has a preview of this weekend's game versus the Phoenix. North Carolina A&T State University is looking for its first 2-0 start since winning its first two games in the 2009 season. The Aggies are headed into Saturday's game on a five-game winning streak after winning the last four games of the 2012 season and the season opener against Appalachian State. The series is tied at four games apiece. This will mark the ninth meeting between the two teams. The game is the first between the two since 2006. The Aggies are 20 and 10 in home openers since the Aggie Stadium opened in 1981. This marks the fourth straight season A&T has opened at home against a non-conference opponent. Last time the Aggies opened against Elon was in 2004, where the Aggies came out on top winning 19 to 17. A&T has won nine out of their last 12 home openers. I'm Nico Winsett with the Aggie Sports Report. We caught up with ANC Athletic Director Earl Hilton recently. He told us about a couple of changes which will take place during home games this year. You may want to bring your earplugs to the games. Is there anything else you'd like to update us on as we look forward to a uh, successful year? Uh, I do want to look forward to a successful year. I like that. Uh, <laughs> always success. Always. Success. We, 
I guess in the immediate future, we have the game zone uh, at Aggie Stadium during the football games, and we are adding a kids zone element to that. It will have some inflatables and a slide. It will be located in front of the stadium on the grassy uh, part of that parking lot. Uh, and it'll be an opportunity for families to come and enjoy uh, the ambiance, uh, the, the, the flavor of Aggie athletics. And we look, we look forward to that addition to our game zone. In addition to that change in the game zone, Avery, we're also going to do some new things with the ROTC this year. Um, after each score, uh, field goal, touchdown, the ROTC units on campus will fire a cannon. I've not heard this cannon, but my understanding it will be loud. And so we need to make sure that the, the patrons our fans inside the stadium are aware of that. They'll also do push-ups, uh, an equal number of push-ups for the points that we've scored. Uh, but we're excited about adding the cannon uh, to, our, to our game experience at Aggie Stadium this year. Hey, App State had a cannon at the game this past weekend, but we didn't get to hear it much. That's our show for this week. I'm Jordan Carlisle. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back next week. This is an a and Historical Minute, and I'm Alex Ravel. Blueford Library, to many students, the name is very familiar, but this is not the original Blueford Library. The original Blueford Library was built in 1955. The library was named after the university's third president, Fernandad Douglas Blueford, who served from 1925 to 1955. The current Blueford Library, dedicated in 1991, cost $16 million. The library currently offers over 700,000 volumes and over 60,000 e-books. The library also offers iPads, Kindles, e-readers, and more electronics to check out. On the second floor, it now contains a lounge for students to eat and drink in. The library is 153,000 square feet and can hold over 1,000 students comfortably. I'm Alex Ravel, and this has been the a and Historical Minute.